G'day WA, welcome to another Cyclone Chasers Cyclone video update today, the 10th of October 2016. My name's Chris Nitzo. This update is sponsored by a major sponsor, Campbell Scientific Australia, when measurements matter. Looking at the visible imagery this morning, we can see across WA, most of the region's pretty clear. That trough and frontal system has pushed through. It's now whacking into Melbourne. Uh, it, it's created a fair bit of havoc, actually, ar around Melbourne. Uh, but it definitely, definitely really got going once it pushed through WA. I know WA, you guys caught 30 to 40 knot winds there for a, for a brief period here in the southwest. But uh, it really pushed on once it went through Adelaide and then into Victoria. Uh, it got a real big kick along. Now, what we can see, though, across WA at the moment is uh, some uh, light, uh, some higher level cloud streaming through the Pilbara region and possibly the southern parts of the Kimberley there. We've also got all this low speckly cloud coming in. Uh, that's not moving onto the coast. It's actually moving away from the coast. There's a big high that's pushing in here. You can see that high, 1,032 hectopascals out here well west of Perth. But what you can see is it's circulating a dry easterly air right across of WA. And there it is, about 500 metres above the surface here, so we take away most of the to topographical effects. You can see southeasterly winds, dry southeasterlies pushing right through WA, particularly for our subscribers in the Pilbara, the Gascoigne. Uh, you can see these winds getting right up there in intensity just above the surface. Thankfully, at the surface, the, the winds are much, much calmer. They're only around 15 to 20 knots. But as you saw, above the surface, looking at 30, 35 knot uh, southeasterly winds. And some of that will mix down towards the surface. So there will be gusts at times. Don't be surprised if we do see the occasional willy-willy around the inland parts and possibly even onto the coast being this dry uh, and as that as that air mixes down you might get that mixing downwards plus the thermal updrafts so we can create those sort of willy willies all around the place on days like today especially considering we have such a strong gradient between the 15 knot winds at the surface uh, to 35 knot winds just above the surface what you can make out here on Thursday morning, very, very early, you see this area here of, of rainfall just starting to stream in from the west. That's going to be the next frontal system that ends up hitting Thursday night, Friday morning across southwestern WA. You can also see just a general build-up of some moisture here across the northern Kimberley and even possibly seeping into the central Kimberley as well. The possibility there on Thursday for some convective activity, albeit quite isolated convective activity. Most of it not any near the coast. That isolated convective activity probably gets a kick on tomorrow, on Wednesday uh, initially and then on Thursday we see more of it. But uh, in terms of today and tomorrow, any activity here in the Kimberley region is going to be extremely isolated. So, so look, Wednesday, possible Thursday, likely uh, convection across the Kimberley region. So you can see this frontal system hits around about uh, midnight to 4 a.m. on Friday morning. Uh, and you can see it's creating some shower activity. Look, it's probably not going to be one of the more spectacular ones. But, hey, it's going to give a little bit of relief from this dry conditions, particularly in the southern parts. Now, that's not going to extend all the way northwards. But what I want to talk about is this little thing. You would have been blind not to notice it up here in the Indian Ocean. This is a tropical low. This tropical low will form off the coast of Indonesia in the next 24 to 48 hours. This tropical low will then move in a southerly direction. How far has south at this stage, the models are not in agreement about. They are in agreement that it will deepen. So it will intensify as a uh, as a not a deep tropical low, but certainly deeper than the last one. If you remember the last one we had up here about it, about two weeks ago now, we had a tropical low that or, that hit Christmas Island. It's a very, very weak system, never really got going, but it did pump a lot of moisture in. And even this tropical low, you can see here on the GFS forecast model uh, that we, we're seeing this moisture streaming in. Because we've got this frontal system coming through at the same time, we've got this moisture plume advec advecting into the area here around the Gascoigne coast. And that's probably one of the more interesting things with this system. Will it get far enough south to do that? And if it does, well, then it could be a slight interest in terms of weather across here. Look, we're not expecting the low to, move, to make it onto the coast. Definitely not. That's not what we're talking about. What we are expecting, though, or what we're hoping, is that it might make it just close enough to pump a little bit of moisture into this frontal system at around about the same time as the frontal system moves through. 
Look, there's a huge amount of variability and doubt as to where this system's going to lie. For instance, this is the uh, Access G model. This is from the Bureau of Meteorology. Now, you can see that the low lies way up here to the north, and it hasn't even tried making its way southwards there. This big ridge coming in from the southern Indian Ocean is keeping the low away from trying to move southwards, so it doesn't have the opportunity to do so, and therefore it has negligible effect on WA's weather. And, of course, it won't be able to pump any moisture into this frontal system. If we take a look at the low here on the GFS Ensemble, what we can see is that the, the system does track south on almost every Ensemble member. And there's Christmas Island. You can just make it out where my cursor is right there. Uh, so you can see the system just, the, 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 low, the low pressure system just moves to the west of that uh, and continues drifting southwards. Then this big high, look at it, the big monster, ugly looking thing, 1,030 something hectopascals pops into, pops into place here and halts the low from in its tracks from continuing to move in a southeasterly direction or southerly direction and then it either shears the low away completely uh, or uh, the remnant low level circulation will push back to the west and you can see there it starts drifting further and further west and then eventually uh, out here into oblivion and just dies but the fact that there's even a low there and the fact that we're even talking about a low there early october well, you put the dots together as to what we could be expecting this cyclone season. Looking at the Canadian CMC model here, we can see that low develops into a weak tropical cyclone on the CMC. Uh, the CMC does those things, don't worry about it. Uh, it, it it'll develop three or four cyclones here. For every ten cyclones it develops, one actually happens. Uh, so that's about its strike rate. Uh, but look, the fact is that the CMC also going for that southerly drift. Then this big high comes into place here uh, and just halts the thing in its track. You can see it starts to bring in a little bit of moisture, but uh, too late. It's already Saturday by that stage the frontal systems move through the upper level environment has settled down and so it really doesn't have a chance to drag in too much moisture into the Gascoigne and so it just sort of washes out here uh, in the middle of the southern or southeast Indian Ocean uh, with very minimal effects on a WA although you can see some very isolated convection developing possibly being fed by a westerly flow here in the upper middle and upper levels so you know it might it might do something for WA but it won't do anything major the only modelling that's not on board with this southerly drift scenario is the euro the euro just wants to take it south a little bit uh, develop it a little bit and then uh, just near Christmas Island start to shift it back to the west so with the Euro folks it does push this high uh, into position very very early and so it positions it by Friday you can see it's positioned here it's entrenched a ridge now across the southern Indian Ocean so there's no chance now of the low tracking further to the southeast in any shape well, way shape or form here and the only thing the low can do from there is either die it'll have two options it'll either die quickly and completely weaken out straight away or it'll die slowly because of dry air entrainment and track back here towards the west as a low level circulation center so it really doesn't have much of a chance uh, at all to to come in towards wa but look uh, the euro is the outlier here uh, it does have the mo most northerly and westerly solution and we do need to note that, but we also need to note that the Euro is the world's number one computer model, uh, and it's the most accurate by a country mile at the moment. So, uh, you know, you can see here it is tracking west and south, oh, sorry, south, just to the west of Christmas Island before starting to shift westwards because this big monster high gets into position a little bit earlier on the Euro than it does in the other computer models. Uh, so, it's uh, once again, its effects on WA will be nil in this scenario. Temperatures today using the high resolution Access R modelling we can see 40 plus degrees in the inland Kimberley, not too unexpected this time of year of course, uh, mid to high 30s just inland of the coast here around the Pilbara. Getting to be a little bit more uncomfortable tomorrow and that those really hot conditions extending south towards Carnarvon tomorrow as well, so you're looking at most of the Pilbara coastline. Uh, being in those mid to high 30s and then uh, parts of the Kimberley still around that 40 plus mark but uh, even the coastal parts of the Kimberley heating up tomorrow as well. By Wednesday we're seeing hot conditions well and truly extending almost down towards Geraldton where we're seeing mid 30s down even, even in 
that far south. Even uh, looking at Perth, in fact, we're, we're starting to really heat up in Perth there with those, with that current uh, easterly flow uh, dragging in warm continental air now. So that air around the continent is starting to warm up through the sun's heating. So normally, you know, earlier in the season, so August, September, if we got an easterly, you might have been nudging 20, 22, 23 for Perth. Now you're going to be nudging around the 30 mark. Uh, because we are starting to get that, uh, those, those hotter winds coming in off the land. Further to the north, uncomfortable would be the best way to describe it. Uh, 35 plus across most coastal and uh, just hinterland districts. Just to show you once again, I do this with Darwin because it's so cool, but let's just show, show you what it is like in Port Hedland. Just to show you the sharp temperature gradient here between Port Hedland and say places like South Hedland. So you're looking Port Hedland, you're probably looking around mid 30s. This is, so we're looking at Wednesday afternoon here by the way, sorry I didn't tell you what day. Uh, mid 30s around Port Hedland, as soon as you get to South Hedland we're over 40. Uh, so that that's the sort of sharp gradient and, and this is all technically one city if you like. Uh, and we've got uh, you know that sharp a gradient from early to mid 30s right on the coast, right where the port is uh, all the way to early 40s just you know less than 15 20 kilometers away uh, so it's a really sharp gradient in WA just like it is in the Northern Territory uh, as soon as you get inland of the coast by oh, geez she gets warm have a look at this this is Karatha this is the Karatha region and we see something similar all the way down the coast although it's not as pronounced further to the south but you can see here uh, Fremantle Compared to Perth, now we all know about the Fremantle doctor. So the Fremantle, uh, you can see here, mid twenties. Perth, early to mid thirties. So huge, huge difference in temperature over a very short distance. So we're going to see some tremendous rainfall from that low, up to half a metre uh, in the falling in the middle of the ocean. But even places like Christmas Island here, looking at closer to 200 millimetres here as we zoom into the region, 150 plus around Christmas Island just from that low pressure system. And of course, if that low actually does track over the top of the island itself, then perhaps we'll be looking more around the 300 millimetre mark as opposed to 150. But a very wet period coming up for them. Pretty well the only weather to speak of coming up for them over the next three or four days until that frontal system comes through on Friday morning around southwestern WA. Thanks for watching, folks. I'll have another chat to you tomorrow if you're a subscriber. If you're not a subscriber, ozcyclonechasers.com.au. Click on the subscribe to OCC link and you'll have access to all of these weather videos every single, almost every single day. I won't promise you every single day because we do go out and chase cyclones occasionally. And you'll have access to the Weather Centre, which had some of the cool graphics that I was displaying to you just a little bit earlier on. Early, early, so early part of the Weather Centre didn't have model graphics, but from this weekend on, we're adding model graphics and we're, we're making things a little bit cleaner here and it's going to look amazing. So get on board, ozcyclonechasers.com.au. Click on subscribe, help us with our documentary efforts. It's going to be a bumper cyclone season over WA, so we'd love to get a few subscribers from WA because I think you're going to find it, it's going to be a very interesting cyclone season for you. Have a great day. If you're not a subscriber, I'll talk to you probably in a couple of weeks. If you are a subscriber, I'll talk to you tomorrow.